All right. Uh, I think we're going to get started here. Bart, are you are you online here? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Awesome. All right. Uh, so welcome, everyone, to our webinar. Uh, this, the name of this webinar is Accelerating Time to Value and ROI with your DevOps Platforms. Um, so, so really, the, the point of this webinar is, is we want to walk everyone through a little bit about how to get value from your DevOps platform. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, DevOps value streams in general. We're going to talk about GitLab as a DevOps platform, do a little demo and, and cover some things and hope everyone uh, can learn a little bit something here today. So uh, a little bit about my background uh, as one of the presenters here. My name is Jordan Saunders. I'm the CEO of Nextlink Labs, and Nextlink Labs is a digital transformation consultancy, and we are focused on accelerating the rate at which companies develop, secure, and scale their software applications. Um, Bart, I'll pass it over to you to give a little introduction as well. Yeah, th thanks, Jordan. So I'll briefly introduce myself. My name is Bart Zhang. I'm a channel solutions architect with GitLab. Uh, and if you're not familiar with GitLab, we are a DevSecOps platform to make your uh, software development workflows better, uh, faster, and more secure. So I'll uh, hand it up, uh, back over to Jordan to uh, kind of set the stage and, and share a little context on why we're having uh, our, our webinar today and uh, why we feel uh, like uh, you know this topic is extremely important for for you as uh, as an audience member. Great. Um... So, you know, we have a little infographic here from Gartner, just, just talking about how CFOs feel that the um, there's already an intense pace of transformation. And, and now, you know, most CFOs feel that we need to accelerate at, or at the very least maintain that rate. Um, and, and so really what this comes down to is, is being more efficient at our jobs, right? I mean, one of the reasons that, that Nextlink Labs and GitLabs focused on DevOps is we want to help bring value to to your customers, to our end customers. And a lot of that involves transformation, right? And so for companies that are making investments in this area, they wanna make sure that they see value from those investments. So software that sits on a shelf or isn't utilized correctly, doesn't really bring companies a lot of value. And so for us, and what we're gonna talk about today is a lot of you know the people process and technology approach and how you know GitLab is a great tool, but if it's not utilized effectively, um, you're only gonna see part of the value that it can return. And so hopefully through this webinar, you're going to see some of the things that um, you'll be able to utilize and maybe some of the approach you might want to take to, to help to see value as soon as possible. So, so thanks, Jordan, for, for kind of sharing some context on you know, how, how we can unlock value through our technology investments. And, uh, and, and so I wanted to kind of change gears and, and share a little bit about you know, the, the most common transformation challenges that we see, um, you know, teams face uh, in terms of people, process, and technology. And here at GitLab, when, when uh, we, we talk about software development and DevOps, uh, we, we break down kind of the challenges that we see into three different categories. Uh, and, and, and this reflects kind of the personas that uh, these challenges are, are tied to, right? Uh, and so uh, from a, a product development standpoint, typically you're going to have product teams, developer teams, and platform teams collaborating hand in hand to, to build um, build new products or better product. Uh, and so when you look at what product teams are trying to achieve, uh, their, their primary goals are how can we accelerate time to market and unlock customer value? Now, uh, in terms of challenges, uh, product teams are typically faced with too many handoffs in the process, broken feed lap, uh, feedback loops, uh, as well as siloed visibility. Now, from a developer standpoint, uh, developers' uh, primary goals are going to be aligned with product teams. They're going to be uh, tasked with uh, accelerating that time to market and customer value through introducing new features to um, end applications and end product. And developer teams, uh, from a challenges perspective, are taking on increasingly more responsibilities due to the shift left and cultural change. So they're responsible for, for building their own tests uh, from a unit test and integration test and a security um, testing perspective, they're required to validate the veracity of their code due to that shift left uh, kind of uh, movement uh, in the DevSecOps space. Now, from a platform perspective, platform teams uh, often uh, face hybrid work styles and disconnected tool chains. Uh, and, and their goals 
are uh, most commonly to scale self-service capabilities for developers so that developers don't have to put in the ticket to request infrastructure or request VMs, for example. Um, they, can, they can do everything on their own. And platform teams are also, um, are also tasked with enforcing visibility and implementing security policies uh, into uh, you know, the process, right? Into those pipelines, for example. Now, from a value streams perspective, uh, here at GitLab, we typically break down value streams into four different categories. And let me back up a second and then share a little bit about what we view as value streams. Uh, so, so value streams are essentially how you capture uh, your processes and understand how those processes, the inputs, and the, you know, directly affect the outputs and and what what the timelines look like for uh, you know your process end to end. So. Uh, we, we break down our value streams into four different categories, right? How can we at GitLab improve uh, your developer experience? So how can we make engineers happier with, with their workflows? How can we make everybody's lives easier? Uh, number two on the list directly ties in with that developer experience. How can we build high-performing teams? Uh, so, uh, so what this means is how can we improve uh, you know, cross-functional collaboration and, and teams kind of working hand-in-hand in hand, no matter where they're physically located or what function they're, uh, uh, you know, you're 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 a part of. Um, how can you work with other other teams uh, in a more efficient manner? Uh, third on the list is how can we help you secure your software supply chain? So we we talk a lot about S bomb and uh, you know secure securing uh, you know the dependencies and everything you source into your applications and end workloads. Uh, and we facilitate, we, we offer tools uh, and capabilities to help you uh, secure your software supply chain. Now, our, our last and fourth, fourth and final uh, value stream is around creating a secure on-ramp to the public cloud. And what I mean by this is how can we serve as a uh, essentially a, a, a common uh, starting point for all applications, regardless of the type of workload um, that you're rationalizing, and how can we help you uh, in your digital transformation journey, in your cloud migrations? Uh, you know, rationalize your applications. Uh, help you know, help you understand how to you know rehost, replatform, or refactor your applications um, based on the type of workload that you're you're uh, porting into public cloud. So I, I wanted to take a second to, to kind of share about the approaches that we see uh, most commonly in the DevOps space uh, that, that, that really undermines um, your, your organization's agility and capability to transform. Uh, and, and we see many organizations today leveraging uh, individual point solutions that are stitched together to create these uh, tool chain fabrics that are expensive and difficult to maintain because they require custom support for uh, orchestration and integration across, uh, you know, across multiple uh, point solutions. And it, and it reduces visibility and it makes it difficult for organizations to, to measure uh, the impact of their transformation because you, you don't have uh, you know, a, 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 a holistic understanding of uh, where your process starts and stops, uh, and and where the bottlenecks exist uh, in in um, you know in between your your point solutions, and this also makes it difficult to collaborate because you have individual teams often tied to their own technology stack. So, for example, you know the, your product team might be tied to their own product specific or product centric tools that aren't necessarily well integrated with the developer's uh, you know set of tools or the operational team set of tools. Maybe operations is stuck in uh, you know, your, your hypervisor of, of choice uh, and they're not necessarily talking with one another and they're not, um, they're not making their work, their own work visible to uh, teams across different functions. Exactly, and, and you know, just to kind of echo what we see out in the field, um, you know, we work with a lot of different organizations and some of them do have this sort of solution in place. Um, and it's not to say it can't be done, right? Um, but there is significant overhead when it comes to operations, when it comes to onboarding, offboarding, um, scaling, maintainability. Um, it's just a, it's a lot of knowledge. I mean, you see on this list that this is just, we work with some organizations that have twice as many tools, three times as many tools. And with every tool, you know, as security requirements grow, as scalability requirements grow, they require a large investment in those tools. And so it's one of the reasons that we recommend GitLab so much is because it is a platform approach. And so we're able to tell our clients, hey, invest your time in learning this tool 
It's been around for a long time. It's continuing to evolve and really it's going to make your life easier. And so really that platform approach is, it, it has a ton of benefits. Again, it's not to be said that, you know, cover your ears, Bart, like it's not that you can't use another uh, point solution approach, um, but there is significant overhead. And for most organizations, it's just not worth it. Yeah, absolutely, Jordan. Uh, so, you know, going to Jordan's point on uh, uh, taking the platform approach, uh, we view adopting a platform like GitLab uh, as uh, a way to drive uh, efficiency in your software delivery value stream. So what I mean by that is when you you bring your, your full SDLC into a single pane of glass, uh, you're, you're, uh, you're, you're porting all, all of your project planning uh, and, and code creation, as well as uh, the integration and verification of your code, all the way to deployment and operations and, and monitoring of your end workloads and applications. When you're bringing all of those pieces of your software delivery lifecycle and value stream into a single uh, single platform, uh, th this, this offers the benefit of streamlining collaboration across functions and eliminates context switching uh, between different tools. Uh, and so this lends itself to uh, more efficient and streamlined processes, uh, as well as better collaboration across teams. And, and so when you look at where the market is moving towards, you'll see that over 60% of organizations are, are moving towards this platform approach. Uh, and, and so Gartner states that by next year, 2024, 60% of organizations will switch from multiple point solutions into value stream delivery platforms to streamline application delivery. Uh, so uh, this is not, uh, you know, a, a one one and done kind of trend. It's it's a, a significant um, a significant movement in the market towards uh, the, these uh, these platform solutions that encompass broader uh, sets of capabilities uh, when it comes to your DevSecOps lifecycle. And so we view GitLab as the DevSecOps platform to help empower developers, security professionals, and operations teams to build better software faster. Uh, and so what I mean by that is um, we offer better insights with end-to-end -end visibility across uh, your software development uh, lifecycle. So you can see uh, how long it takes for uh, you know, a, a, an idea to make it into production. And you can break down uh, each individual step in the process and understand um, where, for example, bottlenecks occur and where efficiencies lie. And that lends itself to better efficiency. Uh, we, we directly uh, support automation and integrations with third-party services. So for example, if you're tied to, and, and you're very comfortable uh, with certain tools in your toolbox, you can integrate those with GitLab. Now, we also offer improved collaboration with a single workflow that unites developers, security, and ops teams. Uh, and I'll, I'll share a, a live demo on you know, how exactly we, uh, we do this in practice. And, and that lends itself to faster time to value because you're, you're, um, you're driving continuous improvement through these accelerated feedback loops. Um, so when you look at what you get with GitLab, most people are familiar with us uh, in, in, the, in the sense that we are, offer version control and source code management, but we do so much more than that. And, and what you may not be aware of is, is we offer advanced and mature product and portfolio management tooling, as well as uh, advanced continuous integration, security, release management, continuous deployment, uh, and so much more, right? And, and we offer that uh, in a single package. Yeah. And, and just to kind of echo here again, like we're working with a lot of companies that uh, maybe are just starting to, to really adopt GitLab or starting to mature their use of GitLab. Right. And so what, what you're seeing laid out here is, is very much our approach. Right. So when we talk about the overall goal, like right? why are, why are we doing any of this? It's, it's to see value. And so from our experience, the, the best thing you can do is to start using GitLab. So start to use it for your SEM, start to use it for your CI CD get people making merge requests, doing rev review apps, completing code, you know, start in that area, right? Because until you start using it, you don't, you're not going to be able to get any metrics on, on what the current state of things are, right? And so if we talk about value, we want you to be able to have metrics and we want you to be improving those metrics over three, six, nine, 12 months, right? And so the first step of that is to actually get your workflows into GitLab. So starting with that CI, CD, SEM, 
code review merge requests, expand into some of the security features, maybe expand into some of the artifact repository, things like that. Um, you know, that's we see that as a really great way to get started and then to expand. And again, I've been using GitLab for almost 10 years. And so one of my favorite things about GitLab is, you know, you'll notice all these features and you'll see on this chart that some of these these features are highlighted in purple or highlighted in gold to signify that they are in the earlier planned uh, stages in their their maturity. And so, you know, one thing that's really nice is when you're investing in GitLab and we get our clients to invest in GitLab, the features and the things we're able to take advantage of to continue to grow. And so this is this is really powerful for the teams that we work with because I don't know about your company, but most companies we work with, the procurement process for software is not so fun. And so we, we've actually seen this and we've taken advantage of it as well is that once GitLab's in place and these features are added, it's not a procurement process to start using this software. Obviously, if you have security um, or infrastructure requirements about operations of the software, you need to go through that process, but that's much lighter than trying to procure a new piece of software, demo it, make sure it fits your team. And so we've watched as you know, infrastructure as code support's been been added, um, some observability pieces have been added, Kubernetes management's been added. Those things weren't part of the product um, you know, a good bit ago, and now they are. And the features that are being added, we know that GitLab builds GitLab using GitLab. So as software developers ourselves, we see these features that are being added. This is the stuff that we want to see. Um, so these aren't extra, you know, things that just have buzzword, you know, buzzword business names. Uh, these are these are features that are actually going to bring your time, your team's value and help you get ROI on your investment. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and so uh, Jordan hit the nail on the head. We here at GitLab, we, we drink our own champagne. So we're we're all about um, using and living and breathing the features that we we ship to customers. So we we are often the first to test and first to uh, implement our own features uh, in our own workflows. All right. So speaking of workflows, I wanted to share kind of what a typical uh, you know best practice workflow looks like uh, that unifies these uh, you know developer teams, security teams, uh, and operations teams under a single pane of glass, a single single platform. And, and so. Uh, so in, in terms of product and portfolio management, uh, we organize uh, our, you know, we, we map out business requirements, line of business requirements to software development deliverables in the form of epics, milestones, and issues. This is how we group, categorize, and prioritize um, what features are, are most important to, to bring to bear. Now, uh, at the most granular form of uh, uh, of of these uh, tasks, uh, we, we have issues, right? And this is where you can assign these uh, individual units of of you know features to be released uh, and break them down, uh, you know, into uh, individual tasks. Uh, that that happens at the issue level, and, and so you can assign issues to uh, teams or individuals. Uh, and, and 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 this is where developers come in. They'll create a merge request, which is how you initiate GitLab flow, and they'll start committing changes to uh, merge requests that implement what the issue is asking the developers for. Uh, and, and so through that merge request, you're able to implement continuously implement changes, uh, and you're able to automate your your, your verification or your, your code testing as well as security scanning on the changes that you introduce uh, as a developer. Uh, and, and this lends itself to better collaboration and review with security and operations professional because, uh, professionals because they can see the impact of um, the changes that you're introducing as a developer into, uh, into the code base, right? And, and so you can, you can take that feedback and iterate on it. We call it the inner loop where you're receiving that feedback upfront and you're able to action upon it uh, immediately. Uh, and, and so through this inner loop, you're able to accelerate the feedback cycle uh, and, and get the, the intended change pushed forward into uh, not only a dynamic review environment, but also to, uh, for example, if you want to implement uh, you know, certain security policies or change approvals, you can designate specific team members to sign off on changes introduced to production. Uh, and, and so uh, now that I've, I've taking a second to uh, kind of share what a typical workflow looks like, um, where, where you're, you're taking an uh, idea all the way from an issue to a merge request um, to 
the approval of that merge request and merging that back into an official release and deploying that release out to production, I wanted to show you guys what this looks like in practice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, jump into a, uh, a, a organizational view, right? This is a group of, of projects which contain uh, the code basis for applications that uh, we're going to be um, we're, we're, we're going to be pushing changes to. Now, uh, in any uh, organization, there's going to be something called uh, a, 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 a set of epics that you can create and assign to milestones, like I, I mentioned earlier. And so these milestones essentially time box how, uh, you know, how quickly you want to uh, release a new application, for example, or or introduce a major feature or major release uh, into one of your existing applications. And so what this offers is the ability to, again, assign deadlines uh, and, and timelines to how, how quickly you want to develop a, a, a new product, for example. Now from an epics view, you can also drill down a little bit further and look at issues. Now issues are gonna be tied to epics, right? They're, they're, um, the epics kind of serve as that higher higher order vision for kind of where you want to drive your product towards and issues are going to map those epics and, and, and uh, uh, kind of break them down into specific tasks. Uh, now, you know, as a developer or product manager, I can look at the backlog and, and better understand, you know, what's, what's prioritized uh, from a weight perspective or what, what's prioritized from a timeline perspective on, on this uh, issue board. Uh, and, and so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to jump into an issue that's assigned to me uh, on a, a sample application called Simple Notes. And so issues are, are where, you know, as a product manager and a developer, I can collaborate to better understand what, you know, as a developer, what a product manager wants, or as a product manager, what I want, um, you know, how I want this feature to be implemented. And I can tie this to a merge request. And this is the, the entry point of the GitLab flow that we, we just discussed about. Um, it's really where uh, you're starting to introduce changes as a developer. And so I can open up uh, my web uh, uh, IDE or in integrated development environment, and I can actually jump in and uh, kind of uh, either introduce changes or review changes that have been implemented. Uh, and then I can go ahead and, for example, if I wanted to introduce changes, right, and uh, add a new function into my code base, I can go ahead and commit and push these changes to either an existing branch or a new branch, right? And typically, um, your branch is going to be tied to your merge request. So if I go back into my merge request, I've already executed this pipeline by introducing a change. Uh, and... Uh, uh, and, and now I can actually review the output of, of that uh, change that I've introduced. So from a code quality, license compliance, as well as a security scan perspective, I can actually kind of review high level changes that have been made. And if I wanna drill down into specifics, I can actually download the output of the security scans uh, if I want to, or if I wanna get even more granular, I can jump into the specific pipeline run where I've automated kind of that build, test, security scan, and deploy of this application. So this. Uh, and what I mean by this application uh, is this specific version of the application. So it's going to reflect the changes that I've made uh, in terms of, uh, you know, introducing that new new feature or function into, into my code base. Uh, and it's going to also tell us, uh, you know, from a security perspective, what, uh, what vulnerabilities are part of this application? How can I fix those vulnerabilities, right? So I can go in here and understand um, how I need to upgrade my dependencies to uh, to patch these vulnerabilities. Now, from a license compliance perspective, I also get the ability to drill down into what licenses I'm using as part of my code base and, and how I can maintain compliance with those licenses. And from a code quality perspective, I can understand how these changes impact my code quality. Uh, so uh, this pipeline is powerful because you're automating and you're executing uh, everything in parallel. So uh, as long as I've specified what what jobs depend on one another, I can execute the majority of these tests on, on the same application in the same environment. And if I want to, I can actually review this dynamic environment and look at my application or, or this version of the application that introduces these changes out in the wild. So if I have everything set up properly, I can test this application from a user behavior perspective, or I can apply continuous fuzz testing on this application. So 
um, you know, so I could have a long lived job that actually goes and, and continuously uh, inputs, um, you know, your SQL injects or, or, uh, or uh, inputs, um, you know, things into my user interface uh, in order to test whether this application is, is robust and secure. Um, so I can test out, for example, if this uh, this notes application is uh, performing the way I want it to, uh, and I can you know apply basic CRUD operations uh, to the backend database for this application. But the point is, this application works the way I intend to. So what I can do is now I can tag the approval uh, owners of of this code base, which typically you know I could designate uh, you know certain members of security and operations to review. Um, you know, the license compliance report or security scans in order to sign off on this merge request and, and merge this into the, the main code base, which serves also as a production code base. Um, but, but the point is, you can introduce approval gates uh, into this merge request so that I, as an individual contributor and as a developer, can't uh, make changes that directly affect production without sign off from the key kind of stakeholders uh, in that process. So with that, I've kind of demonstrated what a typical, you know, what a best practice workflow looks like on GitLab, how we're collaborating across teams, right? The product managers to the developers and, and, and then the developers to security and operations professionals. You're all working within the same context, which uh, again, serves as a way to streamline multiple tools down into a single platform, single place to communicate, collaborate and, uh, and, and work together. Yeah. And, and just to piggyback off that demo, I, you know, I think, you know, most people can see on this call that there's a lot of functionality that's here. Right. And, and we understand that again, companies are increasingly having to deal with compliance requirements. And this gives you the flexibility to have that built-in steps for approval from different parties to, to try to automate and shift left some of the security requirements and still be able to keep your development teams functioning and moving forward, which is, which is really, really powerful. And so, you know, obviously there's a lot of functionality that Bart just demonstrated. Um, but for, for organizations that are looking to start, you don't have to start with, with all of those features, right? Um, you know, you can start to, to build and deploy your software and then start to add the security features. Um, that way, again, you're going to start to see that value as soon as possible. And I think you're going to find that um, a number of these features are going to be pretty easy to add and things might be a little more challenging. Um, there's definitely help out there. That's stuff that we can help with as a company or there's plenty of resources online as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and NextLink Labs has deep, deep uh, expertise in GitLab. Uh, and we, we trust them as a partner to, to help, help you uh, as an end user and uh, organization implement those best practices from not only a DevOps perspective, but also a security perspective. Uh, so one of the change gears and, and kind of share about, uh, you know, value stream dashboards, this is something uh, that, that we introduced uh, a, a couple of versions back. And what this allows you to do is actually metric your entire process. So, so this process that I just went through, right, if we go back to um, the workflow, you can actually metric this entire process and understand what, you know, what the lead time to change is, for example, between um, when an issue is created and when uh, a merge request tied to that issue is introduced. Uh, and, and so what this allows you to do is uh, better understand how your teams are performing across the board. And, and we leverage industry standard DORA for metrics. Uh, these are from the DevOps uh, Research uh, Institute. Uh, and, and these essentially measure how, how and benchmark how well your teams are doing in terms of uh, you know, deployments, uh, deployment successes, uh, and uh, how frequently they're introducing changes into production. And, and so this offers the ability for everyone to be on the same page in terms of, you know, hey, this is what the process looks like today, and here's where we want to drive towards. So going back to value streams, right, um, I, I wanted to take a second to kind of uh, briefly summarize how we improve specific value streams tied to the DevOps and software delivery lifecycle. Uh, so, you know, going back to the, the first, uh, first of four, right, how do we improve the developer experience? Um, you know, we, we make it easier for developers to collaborate, uh, you know, across functions, whether they're, they're working with, uh, you know, the project management teams um, that, that are supporting um, kind of the roadmap and, and vision for the product. 
Uh, and, and this leads to, you know, better, um, you know, better talent um, re retainment uh, and, uh, you know, good talent wants to work with good, good software, right. And, and good, uh, good tools and platforms and you get happier engineers and faster onboarding and, and you're, 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 you're eliminating context switching and reducing your TCO for your, your, your DevOps tool chain. Now with GitLab, you're also able to build high performing teams. Uh, because you're making it more efficient for teams to to collaborate with one another, right? You're making it easier for uh, a product management professional or a security professional to to jump into the same dashboards as everyone else, or the same issues, the same context as everyone else. Uh, and so this lends to you know faster team agility and faster time to value. Uh, now, from a software security uh, perspective, we offer tools and capabilities to help you address security vulnerabilities in context. And, and we have, uh, like I mentioned, the change approvals, which help you implement guardrails on who can and cannot um, you know, introduce changes into production. We also have uh, advanced compliance and governance uh, tooling with audit regulations. So you have a full audit trail of uh, who, who pushed what changes when, uh, and who's who's administering the platform and and, and um, you know applying specific events um, to to the platform itself. And we offer the ability for you as uh, you know as an organization to maintain an up to date S bomb or software bill of materials. Now, from a, a, a public cloud perspective, uh, we are cloud agnostic, uh, so we pair well with any of the major clouds, uh, whether it's AWS, uh, GCP, or Azure. Uh, we have joint solutions and integrations with all clouds, uh, and we can help facilitate, uh, you know, better cloud migrations and help you ramp uh, app modernization to cloud native uh, frameworks and, and, and architectures. Uh, and, and from uh, a deployment perspective, we can also help you incrementally deploy and uh, slowly start to leverage new, new features uh, in your not only your end applications, but also how how you set up your processes and workflows in the first place, like Jordan mentioned. So, from an ROI perspective, uh, I'll throw a number at you all. Right uh, from from Forrester, um, they're saying we've we've got a four hundred twenty seven percent ROI uh, from from an investment in GitLab. So this means you're getting uh, revenue acceleration due to a faster cycle time. You're getting better productivity and better user experience for your developers and, and security and operations teams. You're, 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 you're paring down your tool chain uh, costs, um, both from uh, an actual sourcing and procurement perspective and also from an integration perspective. Uh, and, and that lends itself to an under six month payback period on your uh, investment from the time you, you purchase GitLab to when you start seeing value. Um, to, to cover your initial investment. So I uh, wanted to briefly touch on next steps and, and pass it over to, to Jordan to kind of share how NextLink can help you specifically uh, in your DevSecOps journey. So Jordan, why don't you take us home with, uh, with some NextLink Labs uh, offerings? Sure. So, um, you know, like we covered in this, in this webinar, um, there's definitely a lot of features, a lot of room for efficiencies. Um, but simply buying GitLab by itself is not going to help get you there. You, you need to implement these things the right way. With that in mind, we have you know two engagements that I th we think are great next steps. Uh, the first is a value stream assessment. Uh, so this engagement, we we go in and, and take a look at how you're currently doing things, map out a future state, call out the things that need to help that need to happen, and, and get you towards your end destination. Uh, and the second thing is the GitLab accelerator. So if you if you have GitLab and you've you started to utilize it, um, but you're you're maybe not really utilizing to to the fullest of its abilities, um, this engagement would help us to help you to get started very quickly using our best practices that we've built over years and years, um, and, and get that get you using those in your environment. So these are just two of the two of the engagements we might be able to help you with. Um, along the same lines, I know we're not going to have much time for questions here. So if anything came up in this presentation and you want to, um, you know, bounce off of us and see if we have an opinion on, we'd be happy to, happy to have a call with you. Uh, feel free to contact us at gitlab at nextlinklabs.com or my email is jordan at nextlinklabs.com. So we're always available, always here to help. Um, we know everybody's time is busy and you probably have lots of webinars on your schedule and other things. So I really appreciate everybody that attended. Bart, I appreciate you very much for, for helping to put this together and um, 
hopefully everybody learned a little bit something here today. Yeah, I appreciate the time everybody uh, took to, to, to tune in and uh, we look forward to getting in touch with you shortly. Awesome. Thank you, everyone.